I have something special for you today. Our latest training project brought me over to MP Drafting to create a curtain wall mock-up with their team. Our goal was to get these guys to see everything firsthand what they draw every single day. And I decided to bring my camera along. Welcome to our curtain wall mock-up video. When I first met with Marcus, the owner of MP Drafting, we decided that this project needed to include everything that would happen in a real curtain wall, from having a splice, to glass, to even being anchored. We needed to make sure it was a well-rounded training tool. So after a couple of days of meeting and planning, we decided on a size, the products, and most importantly, a list of all of the items we wanted to include. From here, his drafting team got to work. They created a set of shop drawings for us to review. These would be instrumental in all of the following steps. At this point, we could get the ball rolling. We wanted to make sure to take the team through the entire process. So we started off with the takeoff. We needed to make sure we were gonna have all of the materials we were gonna need. If you're not sure how it works, we have you covered. Our courses on ordering project materials have great videos for you to watch. Once we had our list, it was time to get all of our materials. So we made a few phone calls to our friends to get some of this stuff, and then we went to the local home improvement store. Would you believe that I spent more on the wood than the rest of this mock-up? Thanks, too late. We laid out all of our pieces and started getting to work. First, we built the outside frame. Then we used a four x four with a one x six to simulate a floor line. This would allow us to have a two-story application. Check out these cool photos of me pretending that I had something to do with this stage. So now that we had all of our pieces and our base structure built, it was time to get into the fabrication aspect. So Evan took me over to Driven Fabrication so he could help me cut all of these pieces. The first step was to cut everything. After that, Evan walked me through the entire process of fabrication. So now that we had all of our pieces ready to go, we brought them back to the shop and put the mock-up in its new permanent home. Now it was time to be glazers. We started off by reviewing the shop drawings to make sure that all of the pieces were in the right place. And then we decided to show the team what it would look like if we stick built a section of this mock-up. So we started off on the left-hand side, one piece at a time. It's worth mentioning that we did previously locate all of the FNT clips on the frame so we could easily put them in once it was time to anchor them. As you can see here, we did need to put the F clips into the mullions to stand them up into place. If you want to learn more about FNT clips and why we did what we did, check out this video from our Did You Know series. Now you will notice that the next mullion going into our mock-up is a little different. As mentioned before, we wanted to have all of the different scenarios. So in this one, we decided to include a splice. So we went back to the shop and cut our verticals to create the splice. Once again, we laid it all out on the floor together and we put our T-clips in so we could set it into place. If you're not familiar, a splice comes into play for many different reasons, whether you maxed out your stock length or you need to worry about the building movement. Check out this video to learn more on splices. For the next step in the process, we chose to temporarily place two horizontal mullions to space the next vertical and we repeated this step for the last mulling at the end. Now it was time to get everything locked into place. So we decided to grab a strap and squeeze everything to get it nice and snug. With the strap in place, we anchored the top and bottom F and T clips. And then we went back and locked the horizontal mullions to the shear blocks. An important note here, it's common in our industry to have small issues during installation. And this is when we ran into our first little problem. When we did the fabrication, we needed to hand drill all of the holes into the mullions. And you need to be as precise as possible. Because if you're not, you will face this issue. As you can see from these photos, the holes from the mullions and the shear blocks don't line up perfectly. This made it difficult for us to get all of our screws in. 
It took a little adjustment, but we finally got it together. And we only had a couple of these. Imagine how much it would slow your team down in the field if they had to adjust for every single one of these. When it comes to shear blocks, the whole alignment isn't the only thing you have to worry about. In fact, there's a lot of things that you need to consider. Check out this video for more on that. We also have a good article on this on our site. I'll put a link in the description. Moving on. In order to get the team a different sense of how these things are installed, we decided to do a ladder system for the left-hand side. This means that we pre-built everything and then just stood it up and slid it into place. This process was a lot easier and pretty quick. Note that we only installed the middle two horizontals. We wanted to save the top and bottom for last on all of our pieces. Now, we simply set it in place and just anchored it to the top and bottom. So our next step in the process was to install the top and bottom horizontal members. Now here's a question for you. Do you know why these can't be installed earlier in the process? Well, if you watched our FNT clip video in the Did You Know series, you know the answer to that. As you can see from this photo, we added a bracket to help us keep the system square and stop it from shifting or moving around. Now it's time for us to get the whole system anchored. But first we had to get the steel coated, because if you didn't know this, steel and aluminum don't play nice. Let's just say their chemistry isn't very good. Anyway, uncoated steel will corrode the whole system, so it's important to make sure they're not touching. I chose red because why not? This is where the splice comes back into play and we pulled the whole staff out here to discuss these anchors. We wanted to make sure that we used wind load and dead load anchors in this application. Do you know the difference? If you don't, then you're in luck because I have a video for that also, right here. That's gonna explain to you which ones are used where and why. Anyway, here's an important note. Since we're not able to bolt through the end mullion to reach the structure, we had to add a couple of plates to strengthen that connection so that the anchor would distribute the load on the mullion. As you can see in this photo, we have a wind load anchor for the full height mullions in the ends and a dead load anchor for the center one with a splice. Obviously you wouldn't mix dead load anchors and wind load anchors that we have. We just wanted to show all of the different scenarios in our mock-up. At this point, we have the structure in place. It's anchored and everything is ready for glass. But first, we have to make sure that it's weather tight. So it's time to start playing with some rubber and foam. We started off with zone dams. These guys will help us control the flow of water throughout our system and seal those voids the mullions leave behind. Note that these are typically sealed into place, but we didn't do that so that we could take them in and out later to show future staff. From there, we placed our setting blocks and filled all the mullions with gasket. Okay, it's been a lot of work, but it's finally time for glass. Now you may remember that we decided this was gonna be a two-story structure. And the reason here is that we wanted to show the difference between vision glass and spandrel glass. If you don't know what that is, check out this video. Since this mock-up is small, the order and installation wasn't super important. Just note that we did start from the bottom. As you can see here, we held the glass in place with some temporary pressure bar scraps. Another important note here, as we're installing the final pressure bar, we're making sure to put the weep holes at the top. Now this may seem obvious, but it's a common mistake. The key here is to remember that each window drains at the bottom. So when the water comes down to the bottom of each unit, you need those holes to align with the top unit, not the next unit below. Here's a close up of both an end piece and the middle piece. Now, all we had to do was close it up. So we got our final cut pieces of face cap and tapped them on. Voila. Okay, it wasn't that easy, but nothing a rubber mallet couldn't fix. And that's it. That was a lot of fun, it was quite the adventure. I hope you enjoyed this video and all of the small videos that came out of this. A big shout out to Midwest Glass Fabricators for hooking us up with the glass, MP Drafting for letting us use their team, Driven Fabrication for letting us use their shop, and TubeLight for hooking us up with all of the components. 
Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button at the bottom if you enjoyed this. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video.